Welcome to another 90 second website builder video tutorial. This is Greg Hughes. And in this video, we're going to talk about the image tool. One of the more common tools you'll use probably next to the text tool is the image tool because most websites are made up of text and images. So let's look at that tool. Again, there are multiple ways to grab it. You can go to the toolbox and simply click on the image tool right here, or you can go up to the insert menu and grab the image tool from here. Either way, what you do is you click on it and draw a box, approximately the size of the image you want. It won't really matter how big you make the box because the first thing that happens is the software asks you to locate the image you want to use. And you can use any image that you have, of course that's web friendly, that you have stored anywhere on your computer. And 90 Second Website Builder is going to go grab that image for you from wherever it is. Now, on my desktop, I have a collection of graphics that I like to use that I downloaded from the 90 Second Website Builder members area. And so here I've got some buttons and things I'm going to use for this demo. So let's grab an image. I'll grab this one right here. Now, as I hover over it, I want you to notice some things about this image before we move on. Just as a note of interest, I'm using a PNG image. A PNG is a web friendly type of image. You can also use GIF, JPEGs, and JPGs, or JPEGs, either way. And if you want to, you can use what's called a BMP or a bitmap image. Now, I would recommend staying away from bitmap mostly because they have a tendency to be much larger files. And so it's usually better to use PNGs, JPEGs, or GIFs on your computer, depending on the kind of image and how it was created. I mostly use PNGs and JPEGs in my work. And in this case, we're using a PNG image that has a dimension of 256 by 256. That will be important here in a second. And the file size is also shown here, 17.5K. Now, that will matter when we're working with larger images. 17K is not very big. That's an appropriate image to put on a website. It's going to load fast, unless, of course, we have thousands of them on our page. But the file size is going to matter at some point. Let's talk about that. Now, I'm going to select this image, click Open, and now I've placed an image on my web page. And, of course, as you can imagine, you can drag it around and do things with it. The good thing about uh, the image tool is that it allows you to change the dimension of the image by simply stretching it and shrinking it. Now, by grabbing this right corner, by the way, I keep the aspect ratio intact. You'll notice that it stays the same. However, if I wanted to, I could stretch it this way or I could stretch it this way. It really depends on the type of image you're working with. And you can see that the aspect ratio changes. So if you want the aspect ratio not to change, you grab the bottom right corner and it will fix it. Watch as I grab it and move it. It repairs it back to its original ratio. That's kind of important as you're working with images. It's also important to note that just by changing the dimension of an image, even though I've shrunk this image down in dimension, I have not changed its file size. Remember this image was 17.5 kilobytes. It's still 17.5 kilobytes. Even if I do this and make it really small, I'm not changing the file size, I'm changing the dimension. There's a huge difference. Because if I was using a really, really large image that made my page load too slowly, you wouldn't want to make the mistake of saying, oh, well, I'll just make the image smaller by shrinking it down. That doesn't change how fast it loads. That only changes how it's displayed dimensionally. So that's important to know. Another thing to know when you're changing dimensions of an image is you never want an image to be larger than its original size. You remember this was originally 256 by 256 pixels, right? Well, if you ever want to know how big your image is, you can always go over here to the Properties Inspector. Let me bring that into the window here. I'm going to move this image down here so we can see a little bit better. And we'll move the camera down into the Properties Inspector. Okay, so what I'm looking at here is this image I've got selected. And I'm going to move the camera so you can see. There we go. It shows the size of this image as 140 by 140. That's because I moved it around. I, I changed the dimensions. Let me do it again. If I make it smaller, you can see that those numbers are shrinking. It's now 69 by 69 and so forth. So if you ever want to know what the dimensions are, you can go look at this. You can also literally change it here. If you wanted it to be a specific size, you just change these numbers. And as I change these numbers, you'll notice the image also changes in size. So the Properties Inspector is really handy when working with images, not only for size, but position and opacity, transparency, that kind of thing. 
Okay, so for now, the point is you need to know that dimension is important, but it doesn't change the file size. And you want to make sure you don't stretch your image beyond what it originally was. So since this one was 256 by 256, if I make this image too large, it is going to pixelate when I preview. Let's try that. If I go like this and I make it really big, far beyond what it was intended to be when it was originally designed. Now this is a 667 by 667 image. If I preview that by clicking F5, you see I got a really fuzzy image. It was not intended to look like that. So you, you don't ever want to do that. So then how do you get it back to its original size? What if you forgot or didn't pay attention to how big it originally was? Well, here's a great trick. You can always right click on an image in 90 Second Website Builder and go down to Restore Original Size. And it will take it right back to what it originally was, 256 by 256. Whenever you have an image that is its original size, that is going to be its cleanest look. So if we preview that now, you can see that it looks the way it's supposed to look. Okay, enough about that. Those are just the basics of how you work with images as far as dimensions and size go. But as you can imagine, there are a number of things you can do with the image tool in 90 Second Website Builder. So I'm going to move the camera around here and let's go look at some other pages that I'm working on where I'm using images and how I'm using those images. Here I've used an image that's a logo for 90 Second Website Builder version 10. Now this is an image that has a transparent background. Not all images do. The good thing about a transparent background is that this image picks up the background, whatever's behind it, transparently. And that's kind of handy to do. That will depend on how the image is created. So 90 Second Website Builder is not an image editor. You would need to make your images in things like Photoshop or GIMP or some other um, real draw, some other e image editing program, wherever you get your images. That's where you determine the transparency. I like to use transparent images so that an image will pick up the background. I'll show you what I mean. When I show the e-cover for 90 Second Website Builder, this I designed in Photoshop with a transparent background so that I could put this box up against my background that I like so much. It's got this little shadow, but this again is a transparent background. Now some images don't have transparent backgrounds. Let me show you what I mean. Let's double click on this image and change it to something else. So for example, let's take an image like this YouTube logo. I'm going to click on that, click open. I'm basically changing this image to be the YouTube one here, as you can see. This is a huge image. It does not have a transparent background. And so I probably want to shrink this down. Remember, even though I shrink it down, it doesn't change the file size, but it does change how it's displayed. And you'll see that because it doesn't have a transparent background, it doesn't blend in as well to my particular background. Now there's a place for that. You don't always need transparent backgrounds, but just know that there is a difference in using those kinds of images. There are just a couple more things you should know about working with images in 90 Second Website Builder. One of those is to be sure to save your work uh, as you go. There's a couple of different ways you can do that. Uh, you can go up to the top icon here, the little disk icon where you can click on that once and save your work as you go. Or of course you can go to the file menu and do a, a save or just control S. The point is you want to save your work as you go, especially as you're working with images. And here's why. When you place an image on your website in 90 Second Website Builder, wherever that image comes from on your computer system doesn't really matter as long as you save your work because the software will actually save a copy of that image in a special folder that is associated with this project. The reason for that is if for some reason you put an image on your website or in your project and then later that image moved someplace else in your system, they would become disassociated. But by saving your work, the software is smart enough to also save a copy of that image in a special folder that's part of this project. It's actually called an assets folder and we'll learn about that a little bit more later. But the point of it is, as you're working with images especially, just remember to save your work so that you don't lose anything as you're working. And of course, anytime you want to see the properties of an image, you would just simply double click on it and that opens up the properties window for that object, in this case an image. And as you probably know, most objects on the canvas have their own property settings and you can usually double click on them to get to that or of course go up to the properties window icon on the menu. Once you access the properties of an 
object, in this case an image, there are many, many other settings you can play with. For example, in the case of an image, you can add borders, different kinds of borders, different colors, different radius and width borders. You can even add reflection to the image and different frame styles. The opacity of that is all adjustable here. You can also, of course, make any image a link to any kind of web address, whether it's internal or external or link to a file or whatever you want to do. It's very common to create a link with an image. For example, a button that sends your user to a particular spot on your website or maybe to a shopping cart. You can also add special effects to images. Now, there's so many different special effects you can add. That is the topic of another video. But just so you know, briefly, there are so many different kinds of image effects that the possibilities are endless. But they are all built into the image properties menu right here. You can also add a watermark if you want to protect your image in that particular way. And it's also common to use an image to either trigger an event or be the target of an event. So as you learn to use events in those videos, you'll see how images can play a big part of that. And of course, they can also be part of a CSS3 animation project. Images are very, very common, obviously, in your website, but there are so many things you can do with them that you should have a lot of fun playing with the image tool here in 90 Second Website Builder. So enjoy.